There are two creeks on each side of me here on Schweitzer Road that usually meet underneath this bridge. But as you can see from all this damage behind me, that was not the case during yesterday's flash flooding. The spectators and players will be back out here for the final practice round today and the Pro-Am, which will feature a few familiar faces from LEX 18. There are no tire marks on the road and a man who watched the crash happen says he thinks that's because the driver of the car never even hit the brakes before slamming into the back of the bus. This underneath this light snow ice, so make sure you be careful. If you're just now waking up, just now able to turn the TV on and join us. This is why you are now able to turn your TV on. You see this little green right here. That's a traffic light and it's really close to the ground. It's about my height right now. That heavy snow falling on top of the line and on top of the light really weighing it down this morning. I tell you what, we are at the start line. It is just a few minutes past five o'clock and it is already hot out here. It has also become a very emotional scene here this morning as it appears that loved ones, potentially even family members of this victim have started to arrive. This is Pinkard Pike, just about 100 yards down the road from the Pinkard Baptist Church. Look at what we're dealing with here. This semi truck slipped off the road and hit that fence and these utility poles. A very scary night, I imagine, for those who woke up in the middle of the night to that UK alert on their phones saying there were shots fired near campus. Lexington teachers aren't letting any time before Friday go to waste. Before school and after. Teachers at Winburn Middle School got things started this morning with a walkout before school. They marched out of the school and down the road carrying signs and chanting the rally cry heard all week. Education pays. Find funding first. And after classes ended, teachers from Northern Elementary took their turn on New Circle Road. But it wasn't just the teachers who had something to say about what's going on in Frankfurt. That bad man broke my heart. Over on Nicholasville Road, Lansdowne and Southern Elementary teachers were making sure that side of Lexington knows even after a couple vetoes, the fight is far from over. We just want funding for our schools. We love our public schools and we're just really hoping that Frankfurt will do what's best for our kids. It's getting down to the wire and these supporters say now is the time for lawmakers to act for the students of Kentucky. My mom is a teacher and I want to become a teacher someday and I just don't think it's fair or all the teachers and the kids' dreams to get crushed. Covering the news in Lexington, Tiffany Jackson, LEX 18 News. It's a quiet morning inside the studio of Louisville painter Lynn dunbar Bayes. The only sound is of her brush on a canvas. As she mixes colors in silence and moves unhurried through her workspace, the scene in her mind could not be more different. And the dream comes true. Always dreaming has won the Kentucky Derby. The excitement, the fun, and the vibrant colors of the first Saturday in May fill her head as inspiration for the official art of the Kentucky Derby. It's one of my most favorite times of the year. There's nothing like May in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, nothing like it. The Kentucky Arts Council recommended Lynn to Churchill Downs and after sending a few sample paintings she got the call. I didn't know if this was like one of those prank calls or, <laughs> or what but uh, it wasn't. She put together these two pieces one for Oaks and one for Derby. In the Oaks uh, I tried to show the paddock area a little different perspective on uh, the track. And interestingly enough, of the 21 artists commissioned to create the officially licensed Derby artwork since 1997, Lynn is only the second one who actually calls Kentucky home. I'm honored to be a Kentucky artist. I take pride in it. In fact, I, I use a little tagline that says, um, capturing the spirit of Kentucky. And that's what I like to do when I paint. Lynn says to walk into Churchill Downs and see her art on glasses, tickets, posters, shirts is a dream come true. In the past, uh, Peter Max, you know, I, I love him. This is years and years ago. He did the uh, tickets and I always thought, wow, that would be really cool to do something like that. And I got to do it. So it's like if you visualize things, uh, they can happen. And I'm, I'm thankful to God every day. Every morning, Nancy Kennedy sits in her living room and watches countless drivers speed down Squires Road. Nine out of ten people don't stop for this stop sign here. This morning was no different. I saw this car very fast, 30, 40, and I went, wow, man, 
and she didn't stop for the stop sign. And the next thing I heard was what I thought was thunder. That sound turned out to be a crash, one that landed a Fayette County school bus in her backyard. At first I thought it was a garbage truck. I said, is that a garbage truck in my backyard? And I went over and saw the yellow, and I saw the, the cars were all stopping, opening the emergency door, and thank God there were no kids in there. Police say other witnesses also told them the driver of the car ran the stop sign before slamming into the bus. The bus driver and monitor were a little banged up, but the woman driving the car was rushed to the hospital with serious injuries. Oh, I saw him load the lady in, young lady, tragic, uh, but she just ran the stop sign. Couldn't stop, I think it's because she was going so fast. Now, Kennedy hopes seeing this smashed car and this bus on its side will encourage people around her home to drive safer. I don't know what it's going to take for somebody to do something. Covering the news in Lexington, Tiffany Jackson, LEX 18 News. When Christy Kotza took this video of flooding streets in downtown Lexington last week, she had no idea the impact it would have on her business. And my son, actually, he had said, Mom, I don't think we're going to be open tomorrow. And I'm like, no, no, no. He was right. All this water had to go somewhere, and it ended up in the basement under the daily offering coffee roastery. And inside the basement is the electrical switchboard for the whole block. Friday night at 9, the electricity went out, and we didn't get it back on until yesterday afternoon. For the last week, the roastery had to close its doors to customers. We were really sad for them, and we were worried just, I don't know, how it would affect their business. In this coffee shop, though, the customers are more like family. I mean, this shop, I think, it means just a lot of community. Every time you come in here, you see people that you know. So when Christy announced they would finally be able to reopen today, the family came pouring in. Very humbling to see the community um, and how much that they have embraced us in the two years that we've been here um, and just see the outpours of um, emails, phone calls at 10 o'clock at night, just reaching out to us saying, is there any way that we can help? In Lexington, Tiffany Jackson, Evening Edition.